Hey everybody, Nate here. Got a, another knife to show you. Um, this is kind of the result, the, the weird result of my first attempt at uh, a forged kitchen knife. As many of you know, I'm getting into uh, forging a lot more and decided to try my hand at making uh, a kitchen knife. So this started out kind of like a French style chef knife and because of uh, some issues with heat treat and a few other things that kind of ended up like a weird sax-ish carving knife. Um, but I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the results. So uh, I figured I would show it off to you all. And uh, so here we have it. It's got um, deer antler handle, copper fittings, and the blade is made from an old file, obviously. Um, I ground the teeth off of it before doing any forging because I didn't want those to show. But um, it started out as a fairly thick file. You can see the thickness here, and uh, I tapered it down quite a bit. It's actually decently flexible, and um, ended up with a nice thin edge, good uh, cutting geometry. You can see there is a differential heat treat on the blade, and this one turned out really weird, and it didn't get all the way back to the heel of the knife. But, uh, you know, the whole, almost the whole cutting edge is hardened, so good enough for what it'll be used for. And I kind of did a little bit of a Brute de Forge-ish kind of weirdness with the Ricasso here. I'll give you kind of a close-up of that. And I kind of rounded that off while I was forging it and smushed it out a bit and then matched it up with the copper perfectly and in the back as well. You can see a little bit of bluing there from some vinegar I tried to darken the copper with. It didn't work so well, but um, I may try again and that bluing is kind of nice, so I left it. Um, you can see the handle is fairly simple, just deer antler, nice and flush. Used a, a hard, hard back sanding thing to get all that nice and perfectly flush. And then how the butt cap is held on, there's a bolt that's threaded through the butt cap and then just epoxied in with some West Systems G-Flex. So that's never going anywhere, I trust that completely. And I polished up the end of it and rounded it off just to make it look a little nicer. So it's kind of got a weird um, weird rustic feel to it, a little bit of modern-ishness. But um, you can see the hamon on this side is pretty nice. Or, I don't know hamon, but just differential heat treat. Um, Turned out pretty, pretty cool, and this one is actually going to be a gift for some family friends. Uh, we had an uh, Italian foreign exchange student come over when I was in high school, and my mother is taking a trip over there, so she wanted to bring them a gift. So I think this should be quite nice. Um, as you can see, I signed it. I started doing this with blades that I do a differential heat treat on, or that I'm going to etch, because I just sign it with a Sharpie before the etch, and then once it comes out, leaves that nice nice signature there that I think is very cool and kind of classy and it's uh, unique to each knife but overall I'm really happy with how it came out came out um, not exactly what I was planning the whole time but it looks cool it feels nice in the hand it's, uh, nice and light overall but got a good balance and I think it'll work really well for a uh, sort of carving knife um, you can get a nice choked up grip on it, and um, how long is it? It's uh, it's about an eight inch blade, about twelve and a half inches overall, and of course with all of my knives, very nice and sharp. So. That's all for today, everybody. Thank you for watching. Be sure to watch for me on History Channel's Forged in Fire. April 12th, I will be on the ninth episode. So, have a good one, everybody. Peace.